Welcome to Dr. Piercy's The Basic Technology Stack of Network Application Development. As you know, the Internet is a collection of connected computers. Applications that run on the Internet generally have components that run on multiple computers at once for them to work. There are several different ways that we can connect distributed components, but the basic architecture of the Internet is something known as a client-server network. A client-server network is a network architecture where some resources are located on one computer, called the server, but are available to other computers, called clients. So when we think about an Internet-based application, we have to think of components that work on the server side as well as the client side. The client side represents the operations that are performed by the client. The server side, then, represents the operations that are performed by the server. Clients request resources from the servers. These requests follow rules that are governed by something known as the HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Servers will then try to formulate a response that will send the requested resources to the client, also using HTTP. What is a client? The client is basically software that runs on the client-side device. So, what are some examples of clients? A client can be a browser such as Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, or Chrome. A client can be a mobile application, something like Angry Birds or your Facebook app on your telephone. A client could also be a desktop application. Desktop software like Microsoft Excel can be used and can actually connect to the Internet to download data. When we think of developing for the client side, or any other software for that matter, we need to keep in mind a computer science concept known as separation of concerns. By separation of concerns, we basically create components in a way that clearly defines different roles of responsibility to different components that we'll create or technologies used in the system. For the client side, we have three basic separations of concerns. For instance, we need to define the data structure of the client side content. This is done using a technology known as HTML, also called Hypertext Markup Language. We might also want to specify or define a nice style. Style controls aesthetics, such things as color, text, fonts and styles, layout, and other things. For style, we use a technology known as CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. The third concern that we're thinking about on the client side has to do with behavior or programmed interaction on the client side. Things such as a suggested list when you try to key in a search term or interaction that occurs when you click on a button or mouse over an advertisement. These are all examples of behavior. Behavior on the client side uses a standard technology known as JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language. It is not to be confused with Java, however. Let's have a look at the client side of a program that most of you are familiar with, basically the Google Search application. Here I'm showing it in my Chrome browser, and as I record this, it's the 101st anniversary of the first traffic light signal system. Try not to get distracted by the famous Google Doodle, which is honoring this anniversary. In this case, here's the view or the user interface of the basic Google search page. Except for the Google Doodle, it's pretty minimalist in its approach. There's primarily a search box with a Google search button and an I'm feeling lucky button. This page requires all three of those client-side separation of concerns to make this search page work. For example, there is HTML to define the structure of the content. There is also CSS. While it's a simple page, there are things such as the image or the color of the text on the buttons. There is also the layout of the page, which specifies the location of the Google Doodle, the text box, and the buttons. Finally, there is also behavior, as implemented using JavaScript, that is available on this page. For instance, when you start to type a search, notice immediately it will start to create a search for you, even suggesting potential search terms. All of those technologies, or separations of concerns, come together to create the basic Google search page, which we all know and love. Having defined the technologies that we're going to use on the client side, 
let's take a look at the server side. Recall that the server side handles operations that are performed by the server. The server side is also created with separations of concerns in mind. For example, a web server is used to receive requests, determine what assets are needed to honor requests, and to send a response. The web server will then pass on control to an application server. An application server is a software engine that will run the server side program components that we are going to create. So the application server is basically going to run programs or components of programs. So we need a programming language to write these components. There are many that you can choose from on the server side. For the lessons in my class, we primarily use Java. Some alternatives could be the Microsoft.NET family of languages, PHP, which has been one of the most popular languages used for web programming, up-and-coming languages such as Ruby and Python. One trend is to move JavaScript to the server side. There are many other languages you can choose from. Creating applications on the server side requires a good knowledge of object-oriented programming, and most of these languages support object-oriented programming. Many object-oriented programming applications follow something known as a software design pattern. A design pattern is a generally reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context in software design. So many web applications are created that it is a very reoccurring problem. The most common software design pattern used in server side of a client server network application is known as the MVC design pattern. The MVC design pattern is composed of components that fall under three basic categories. This allows us to separate concerns into clearly defined roles of responsibility, much like we did on the client side. The first concern is handled by the model components. The M in NVC stands for model. These components handle business logic for the application. For the applications in my courses, we will work with Java. We will be making plain old Java objects, or POJOs, to handle the model. Another component is known as the view. The V in MVC stands for view. The view components handle the user interface logic for the application. Primarily, they are used to create the response that will be sent back to the client. With Java technologies, we create something known as a Java server page, or a JSP. The C in MVC design patterns stands for controller. Controller components handle the input logic for the application, in this case, from the request. With Java technologies, we will make specialized Java classes, known as servlets, to act as our controllers. At this point, you might think that we are done with the server side, but actually most large-scale Internet applications require a vast amount of data to be organized and stored. In order to do this, we need to connect our server side application to a database. Database components include a data server, which is responsible for managing and access to a database. And we include a database itself. A database is basically a large organized collection of data. And here we have a complete technology stack that will allow us to create client server applications to run over the Internet. Let's think about that complete stack with our old friend Google. Our first request is when we either type in google.com at the top of our browser or click on a link to get to the Google home page. The response for this request provides the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to define the search page shown here. When we type in a search term, let's look up MVC, a new request is then sent to the server. The server will probably run some application called search. It will receive our search term as data as part of the request. The application will use that to connect to the database retrieve all of the URLs of various sites in pages that are discussing something related to the keyword MVC, and then formulate a response, like that shown here. This response will also include HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the contents or data that we've requested. Each time that we click on something in our browser body, a new request will be sent to some server. 
An application will run there and a response will be formulated and sent back to us to view in our client browser. To summarize, let's list the various technologies once more. Keep in mind that we may vary the order that we will study these technologies in our course. Recall on the client side that we will use HTML as the standard technology for structuring web page content. We will work on style with CSS and we will add interaction using JavaScript on the client side. On the server side we will work with Java objects to create the model for MVC. We will use JSPs to handle the view. We will use servlets to act as our controllers to handle the response and we'll use POJOs to create our model components. We will then combine the model, view, and controller components to reach our goal of understanding the MVC design pattern. Once we have the MVC mastered, we can turn our attention to connecting this to a database. This complete view is currently known as full stack development. Programmers who master all of these technologies are known as full stack developers. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. All rights reserved by its creator. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.